In GrandMA3 version 2.0, you can fully customize your encoder bar. So the central place where you control fixtures, attributes and features. Therefore, we will introduce an encoder bar pool. Let's have a look where we can find it. We open a new window and in the add window, you can find a tab with all your pools. And in the pools, you can find the new encoder bar pool. That means you can create multiple encoder bars to your personal needs. The first object in the encoder bars pool is always fixed, locked and cannot be changed. You, so you have always a fallback to go back to the default settings with the default arrangement of the encoder bar. But next to this, you can create your own personalized objects. So let's see how to do this. We edit one of the free objects and you can see that you can create a new encoder bank. So the encoder bank where you normally select the feature groups like dimmer, position, gobo, color. And in the tree structure below, you can find several encoder pages you can create, which are for the features like here for the dimmer or for pan and tilt. In the color feature group, you have sometimes RGB and the color wheel. So all the different feature groups live on the different encoder pages. And then you have the five dual encoders, which you can completely set individually now. So let's do this. Maybe we want to create an encoder bar, which is responsible for our moving lights. So we call the encoder bank moving lights and we want to create the first encoder page which takes care of the basics. And the basics for us on encoder number one, we want to have the dimmer attribute. So we select dimmer and by default you can see that the inner wheel gives us the coarse resolution and the auto wheel gives us a fine resolution. You can see it with the brackets in there that we use the default setting here. On the encoder number two, we want to have maybe pan. On the third encoder, we want to have tilt. And the fourth encoder should be a combination of zoom on the inner wheel. And maybe on the auto wheel, we want to have something different, which is focus, to have these two attributes directly on one fingertip. So you can do this. When we close this window, you can see that we have created a new encoder bar object. So again, let's label this to moving lights maybe. And if we change to that encoder bar pool object, you can see that our encoder bar changes. We have the moving lights as our encoder bank. We see the basics as the encoder page and we have a complete personalized encoder bar with dimmer, pan tilt and zoom and focus on the inner and auto wheel. So a complete personalized and customized workspace for your basics to control your moving lights in this encoder bar. Let's also have a closer look at this moving lights encoder bar because what we can see are two nice additions here. We have the special dialog tab. So once you select your encoder bank, like pressing on moving lights, you can select what should happen with the special dialogs. So should it change to the color special dialog or to the shapers? So especially once you create an encoder bar, which is responsible for your color control, maybe the color special dialog makes sense. And as a highlight, you can also combine this with a command. So selecting an encoder bank could run a command as well. So imagine you have your color encoder bar and you immediately call your color control view or you have an encoder bar for your media service and it definitely selects all the layer fixtures you want to deal with in that moment. So you can directly connect a command together with selecting the encoder bank. This is a nice addition to this whole encoder bar workflow. So check it out, have a look at the encoder bar pool and have much fun to create your own personalized encoder bars.